Thank you everyone for joining the Industrial Defender webinar, which focuses on agent deployment and Industrial Defender's ability to be deployed regardless of endpoint type or granularity of network segmentation. I'm George Calavantes and I head up the operations group at Industrial Defender, but I'm also a former asset owner with over 17 years of utility experience. With me is Jeremy Morgan, our principal solutions engineer, also with almost 15 years of asset owner and OEM experience. And he will be taking us through the different deployment methodologies today. We felt that there was a need to educate the marketplace on the challenges of monitoring heterogeneous ICS environments and how Industrial Defender can meet those challenges with our different agent deployment methodologies and technologies. As many in the ICS space know, there is no silver bullet with respect to ICS, asset identification, and security. And it takes many different deployment methodologies, i.e. active and passive, to fully identify an ICS environment. With that said, I will now hand it over to Jeremy to take us through the agent deployment. Thanks, George. So here's what you have. You have a typical picture of a typical DCS and SCADA system uh, with different network segments. Up top here, you have more IT-friendly assets. This will be the zone that's most often connected to your corporate network uh, to get data in and out between the plant and, and the rest of the enterprise. The next step layer down, you'll have, uh, was where in, most of your engineers spend most of their time. This is where you have the HMIs and the operators and the engineers all working and doing their day-to-day -day day -day routines. And then down here on the bottom, is where IT meets the physical. This is where things really go from an IT-centric to process-centric and require a lot of specialized knowledge. The first step is taking a look at the ease and breadth of coverage combined with risk. This really translates into simple first steps of deploying agents on the IT assets, configuration data from your firewall, and syslog forwarding from devices that can be easily deployed. You are also going to get an ids to provide network protection and aid and asset discovery for any asset with an IP address. Since most attacks originate in the zones that have the most human action, you're getting a ton of value with just these first few steps. As you can see, this will give a lot of coverage in the top two zones and really add visibility and awareness into your security checkpoints between layers. You now know and more importantly can take well-informed actions to the firewall rules protecting your boundaries. You can detect rogue devices and access points. You can truly detect and manage changes to software and accounts and can track vulnerabilities using our passive vulnerability management technology. Hey Jeremy, I apologize for interrupting. This is routine work and Industrial Defender considers this complexity level easy or ID zone one. George, what's that graphic? I've never seen that before in my life. Jeremy, just listen to me. At Industrial Defender, we were looking for an easy way to define the complexity of OT asset management and security coverage, and how Industrial Defender can meet these challenges. Unfortunately, many of us during this pandemic have had to convert areas of our house to home gyms. In my case, my wife forced me to buy a Peloton last year. In retrospect, a wise decision. With that said, I found the bike's FTP zone meter resonated. The FTP represents your fitness threshold. In our case, this graphic will represent the different levels of OT security and compliance coverage complexity. We will use this graphic throughout the presentation to identify the different challenges of data collection and how ID categorizes each level. Jeremy took you through the ID Zone 1 easy. We believe that most companies, when leveraging embedded agents and typical feeds, can perform at this level. What differentiates Industrial Defender from other companies is our ability to extract information from harder to reach devices regardless of network connectivity. Jeremy, please continue. George, I never saw a Peloton in any of the Netflix documentaries I streamed, but I think I get it. On to the next zone. All right, <laughs> in step one, you've deployed Industrial Defender on your IT-friendly assets and have really gained insight and started reducing risk to your process. You are making progress in remediating misconfigurations and your local compliance and security staff are more self-reliant and are looking at getting the answers for the next audit by themselves. You now want to leverage these advantages across even more assets. This could be things like GPS clocks, network switches, basically anything with a modern IP address and a meaningful management interface like SSH. Mostly these are process adjacent, meaning in support of, but not actually doing protection or control logic. The one exception in this zone is SCL relays, even if they are in a mostly serial set. We still have the ability to bring them in into this zone. Again, the purpose is, safe, is to safely move up in complexity while getting closer to the physical process to increase awareness and reduce risk. 
Industrial Defender considers this complexity level low, or ID zone too. Hey Jeremy, great presentation thus far. I do have a couple of questions. Are agents and SSH the only collectors we have? And secondly, why do we consider the Schweitzer relay to be complexity level low? George, Industrial Defender has over 200 specific collectors and leverages several different collection methodologies. Telnet, SSH, HTTP, WMID, WRM, web scraping, and file integration, just to name a few. So regardless of whether it's an RTU, an HMI, a relay, or a substation gateway, we have standard collectors built to extract the information. And the reason that the SEL connection is in a complexity level low is due to our extensive experience interacting with them. So once Industrial Defender has performed the collection engineering, the SEL asset is considered no different than the Cisco switch in the Industrial Defender remote agent library. That's great news, Jeremy. Thanks for the clarification. So what's next? So glad you're excited, George, but we've done a lot already. You now know, and more importantly, can take well-informed actions to document and monitor the firewall rules protecting your batteries, to detect rogue devices and access points, to detect removable media actions in your HMI and engineering servers, to truly detect and manage changes to software and accounts, to track vulnerabilities using our passive vulnerability management technology, when cybersecurity experts in all the different frameworks talk about asset management as the foundational key to a great cybersecurity program, these are the actions they are talking about. Remember, all the big name attacks started with humans doing things in either corporate or transitional areas. Stuxnet, Ukraine, Shamoon, WannaCry, all of them were humans doing things in these first couple of layers. And that's why we re recommend doing these foundational actions first. It's straightforward, easy, and safe to deploy and allows you to effectively manage your risk. Thanks, Jeremy. We've covered a lot of ground and a lot of risk. Let's save the more complex scenarios like air gap networks, deploying with data diodes, and asset management techniques for the lower layers for next time.